Howdy. Welcome to the Texas A&M University College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences Peer Program's STEM Education Series. Today, histology professor Dr. Larry Johnson will present Examining Plant and Animal Cells. The function of a cell is dependent upon the organelles within it. Dr. Johnson will describe the structure and function of these, of these organelles, as well as how they relate to the structure and function of the overall cell. He'll also describe the differences and similarities of a plant and animal cell and their organelles. Welcome, Dr. Johnson. Thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you guys for join, joining us. Today we're going to talk about the plant and animal cells, the similarities and uh, differences that, that we see. Not all of them, of course, but certain ones. Uh, and we'll uh, have some uh, drawings, as you see here, to show. We'll also have some uh, images of real cells, uh, as seen here with a plant cell and animal cell. We have some cartoons well, for the different uh, organelles as well. Uh, and so if we look at plant and animal cells, we see that there are certain things in order to be a cell of either plant or animal, you have to have certain things. One of those is a cell membrane, a membrane that goes all the way around the cell. Uh, and we'll talk about the function of that membrane here in a little bit. And inside there you have cytoplasm. Uh, and then also there's a nucleus in there for both plant and animal cells. There's ribosomes to make proteins in both of these. Uh, and there's mitochondria to provide ATP, energy, for the cell. But there are some differences between plant and animal cells. And three things that we can see and we'll talk about in this presentation. One is chloroplast. You have chloroplast in plant, and plant cells but not animal cells. Uh, and that lets you use sunlight, the sources of energy, all the energy of the, of the world. It comes from the sunlight. Uh, and so chloroplasts able the cell to be able to make sugars, store food uh, from uh, chloroplasts, uh, from the uh, energy it's got from the sun. There's also a large vacuole. Animal cells have small vacuoles, but a large vacuole in the case of plant cell. And then also plant cells have a cell wall. So outside their cell membrane, they have a wall located out there to a cell wall. We also use electron microscopy to look at the organelles since uh, uh, organelles are microscopic. Uh, and so we'll see that here we see a cell. We can see the nucleus. See part of a nucleus with the chromatin material inside there. Uh, here we see the Golgi apparatus, which looks kind of like pancakes cut on the side. Here we see mitochondrion. So we'll talk about mitochondrion. And here we see rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is important in making proteins uh, for secretion or within the cell. Now in the plant, we see a chloroplast, a chloroplast which uh, helps them use uh, the energy from sun uh, to make sugars and starches. So basically, we will uh, want to look at an overview of cells and organelles in cells. Uh, we'll look at differences between plants and animal cells. And then we we'll look at organization within the body if there's time at the end. And there's some questions for you all along the way. First question is right here. How did the cell get its name? How did the cell get its name? And here we see Hooke's microscope, primitive microscope. Since cells are very small and microscopic, you have to have a microscope to see them. And here's his drawings that they had where they sold them, looked like the little boxes. And in fact, when Hook first observed uh, plant cells, he looked at a little piece of cork. He was able to cut the cork and look at a very thin piece. Uh, and it reminded him of monk cellula, rooms that monks used to live in. And uh, cellula was uh, from which he coined the word cell. So he called that a cell. And this is what he was seeing. This is a, a plant cell. As you can see the, the cell wall around individuals. Little boxes is what uh, he saw. Little rooms, cells. And then we discovered that indeed animals have cells too. But they are more varied uh, in shape. You have some tall ones. You have some short ones. You have some intermediate ones. <coughs> you have some with uh, cilia on the surface. 
you have some with secretions, so they're a little more varied uh, in the case of animals. What they noted was there were some more primitive cells, the prokaryotic, pro before the kernel, before the nucleus, and eukaryotic cells, which has a nucleus located in it. Uh, and so here we see bacterium. They, today we have uh, prokaryotic cells. And then this is a cell here. There's one cell, see the nucleus, a eukaryotic cell that has a nucleus. And so this came up with uh, the cell theory, the cell theory you have to know about. Uh, and basically there's three components. One is all organisms uh, are made of one or more cells. Some animals only have a single cell. So if you don't have a cell, you're not alive. Rocks don't have cells. They're not alive. So you have to have cells to be alive. And it's the basic building blocks of life. Multiple cells, uh, multiple function. Uh, uh, you get a function of, of, of cells, tissues, organs, and organelles. And then cells come from other cells. Those are the three components that are there. So because of the development of the microscope, as I said, cells are microscopic. Uh, those advances of the microscope are la labeled a scientist to see the cell for the first time, and they came up with this cell theory, which is components uh, of all living things are cells, and cells are the unique building blocks of life, and that one cell comes from another cell. The cell theory is one of the fundamental uh, foundations of biology. Uh, evolution is another one. And here we see one of those cells. This is a prokaryotic cell. Now, why is this prokaryotic? Why is this one prokaryotic? Um, a prokaryotic cell has no nucleus. So it has DNA, but no nucleus. And so it doesn't have a nuclear membrane. So the, the DNA is not sequestered in the cell. So the DNA and, and the uh, different components in the cell all are together. Now here we can see some more detailed uh, similarities or uh, differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, like a prokaryotic cell bacteria versus plants and animals. Cell size is much smaller, maybe tenfold smaller uh, in the case of a prokaryotic cell. A metabolism, uh, you could use oxygen or not, but in eukaryotics, all of them need oxygen. That's why they have mitochondria. And the DNA is circular shape uh, in the case of a prokaryotic as opposed to linear in the case of DNA of eukaryotic cells. Uh, the the uh, ribosomal RNA, the RNA and protein is all together, all in the same compartment in the prokaryotic, but it's sequestered in different compartments because you have membranes uh, to separate them. Also, so you don't have cytoskeletal components. As a consequence of that, you don't have cytoplasmic streaming, and we will watch a little video on cytoplasmic streaming later on. So cytoskeletal is a railroad track for which the organelles move along. Uh, a cell division, uh, in this case, the chromosomes are attached to the cell membrane, plasma membrane. Um, uh, but the, in both cases, they pull apart uh, during cell division. One cell versus multiple cells in the case of eukaryotic cells. So in terms of the age of the prokaryotic and, and eukaryotic cells, a prokaryotic cells uh, consist for about 350 billion years, a long, long time. Eukaryotic cells only 150 billion years old. So for the total amount of time that living things have been on Earth, the eukaryotic cells is less than half of that, of that time. It took a lot more uh, time to develop the nucleus and the control that's inside the cell. Now, how big is a cell? Here we see a cell right here. So uh, it could be from 10 to 100 micrometers, somewhere like in that. A cell is much smaller than a teacher, but it's much larger than viruses, or atoms, and so it's right there in the middle, and we can see, this is what you can see with your unaided eye up to here. So you can't see a cell, a, a cell by itself. So the uh, scientists had to discover a microscope. 
Here you see the microscope, I can't see these things, and so I can see cells. Also the electron microscope, as we see here in red, can see these cells too. So you can see things with both light uh, microscopy, which is what this is here, and electron microscopy is what we see there. So you see much more details with electron microscope than you can with the light uh, microscope. Now cells contain organelles, organelles of which makes it, uh, makes it work. So here's a nucleus and here's a cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm we have these hosts of, of organelles. And one of those is a cell membrane. The cell membrane marks the, begin, marks the limits of the cell. It separates the cell from the environment. It's the gatekeeper. It separates the cell. Uh, and here we can see the cell membrane uh, through here. So these cells just divided, uh, but before the cell membrane uh, uh, separated the two, they were together. So what separates these is the cell membrane. Here we see where the cell membrane has been amplified by having little projections on the surface. So the cell membrane. So it's kind of like a water balloon is what the cell membrane is. Uh, and so the balloon will hold the contents. It will hold watery structure and the cell is full of fluids and organelles. But you pop it and those organelles will be discharged just like this water balloon would be and the cell would die for sure. So the cell membrane uh, is thin very thin, you can see it, there's a cell membrane here, right there, see proteins projecting in the cell membrane, uh, it's very thin. And it functions in regulating traffic of ions and macromolecules. Here you can see oxygen goes right through, carbon dioxide goes through, but, uh, but here glucose, what we need glucose doesn't go through. So the cell membrane, uh, sodium doesn't go through. So things that the cells need at a certain concentration can't just go through. So it regulates that. It also possesses attachments. So here we can see where one cell is attached to another cell, and we can see that here. This is one cell, another cell, another cell, another cell, and you can see the attachments. We call these cell junctions. So these are the junctions <coughs> that allow cells to make a cavity be able to keep your urine in the urinary bladder because these junctions uh, uh, allow cells to hold hands. Uh, also, uh, we have the, a function of a cell is to recognize uh, and be specific. Uh, red blood cells are different types, you have A, B, C, D, different types of blood. All that is uh, on, the, uh, on the surface uh, of these cells. There's also pumps, so along the cell membrane uh, has pumps in these proteins that we see there. Was there a question? Yes, we have some students, uh, some falcons. They'd like to know, can a cell be bigger in one part of the body than another? Yes, it can. The cells are different in size depending upon uh, what, they, what they do. Um, for example, here we see red blood cells. Uh, red blood cells are a, a, a certain size, kind of small, biconcave in shape. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, also in blood is a, is a monocyte, another cell that makes a macrophage. Uh, it would be three times the size of that, and both of them are in blood. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it, it's muscle, except muscle is very different. Small, small cells, like smooth muscle cells, as opposed to uh, a, a skeletal a muscle cell, is very big. It has multiple nuclei, very long and big. So it can vary in size depending upon uh, where you are and what the function of the cell is. Uh, if we look at, the, still looking at the cell membrane, uh, cell membranes are composed of phospholipids. Phospholipid is something that has uh, two, has a head and tail. And the head loves water. The tail hates water, repels water. It runs away from water. That's how the cell membrane works. So if you take these phospholipids and put them in the water, they will make a micelle, a micelle like this, because the tails are running from the water. Also, you can uh, make a membrane. So this is a membrane like you see the cell membrane or also other membranes uh, in the body as, as, as in the cell as well. And so they line up in such a way, it's a bilayer, two layers, 
makes a membrane. Now, my cells occur uh, in soap, in soapy water. So how does soap work? Uh, we can see here soap, what soap does, soap uh, makes these micelles that are in water. Uh, and so dirt doesn't like water, it likes oil and lipid. So the dirt will move into the micelle, and then after you wash, all cycles, the next cycle is rinse. So you rinse out the micelles that's holding the dirt. That's how soap works. Um, it's, it's fatty uh, material. And so if you have a certain chamber here, a chamber like this with an uh, opening in between here, and throw the phospholipids in there, they will make a lipid bilayer. Again, uh, the tails are trying to run from the water. And so uh, that just occurs. The membranes are self-assembled, self-sealed. We're able to live because our membranes are self-sealed. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be able to, to do it. It has to do with phospholipid, uh, uh, the tails running from, from the water. Now, how the membranes work. So the cell membrane or plasma membrane is a, a lipid bilayer. So you have the phospholipid, the part that loves water, the part that hates water, uh, and that forms a, a, a bilayer, as you can see. So this is touching water, this is touching water as well. And so uh, that, uh, that makes the membrane. This is the cell membrane that comes in here, the lipid bilayer. So outside there's water, inside the cell there's water, uh, but you had a hydrophobic uh, area in the center where you don't have uh, have water, and these tails run from the part that doesn't like water, runs from the water, and they line up in such a way that the tails are not touching water. Now, the cell membrane, a summary, is necessary for life. Without a cell membrane, you're not a cell. It marks the limit. It defines the cell. It separates the cell from its environment. Uh, your organelles are not in the environment. They are inside uh, the cell membrane. Now, cell membrane cannot be a total lock. Certain things have to go through. We have to get sugars. We have to get proteins, amino acids, nutrients, get waste out. And so uh, you, that's part of the function of it to regulate uh, putting in, letting in certain amount of things that are there. So in addition to cell membrane, we have the nucleus. And the nucleus is the archive of the cell's DNA. What do you mean by archive? You know the library has an archive, right? So it's memory that's there. So in the nucleus, it remembers that this cell is a certain type of cell and it different from other cells. And also it remembers enough that, uh, so it has all the DNA uh, that every cell in the body has. All of them have the same amount and that's the archive. So what do you mean by archive? And here we can see different shapes of cells. Here we see blood cells. These are red blood cells that we were talking about vary in size. Uh, and then this is a, a, big, uh, a big cell, uh, probably a monocyte that's located right through there. Nerve cells big, this intestinal absorptive cell that we can see. But the archive is all cells of the individual animal have the same genes, the same genome. It doesn't matter if it's muscle, connective tissue, whatever it is, it's got the same genetic information. But what's different is how it expresses it, how it uses its tools. That's what's different. This one is absorbing. This cell here is, is, uh, is a nerve cell and it's transmitting. So it all depends upon how they use their components to do that. And what's in the organelle depends upon what's in the DNA and it meets upon which, which one uh, is being expressed. The same is true with plant cells. Whether you are a leaf or, or bark or stem, it doesn't matter. You've got the same DNA inside, inside the cells. So archive of the cell uh, is, encodes all the proteins. So it remembers how to make proteins. It remembers how to do things is what it does. Also, living things differ widely and the number of nucleotides. And here we see the number of nucleotides here. Here's humans way over here. Mammals is very small in relation to plants. Plants, remember plants, uh, are, uh, plants here are 
we, we have, a, a, here's a lily over here, E. coli over here, newt, different ones. And so uh, it varies differently depending upon the number of, of, uh, of nucleotides you have in your DNA genome. Now all this is not being expressed, even in, even in humans, but it still has a lot more, uh, plants have more than humans. So the nucleus uh, uh, is a source of informational molecules, information. And so here we see that this is a nucleus and through here, cytoplasm, nucleus. And so the DNA uh, transcribed the messenger RNA. Then messenger RNA is a signal, informational molecule, that moves out into the cytoplasm. Uh, and then the ribosomes uh, uh, read the code, and then the transfer RNA brings in the amino acids that make that code. So these are different ribosomes. All of them are making the same protein because they're reading the same code that came through the messenger RNA that ultimately resides in the archive of the nucleus that we see. And so here we see the nucleus that has the information and it passes it on with messenger RNA to the cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm uh, makes these various uh, structures. These are uh, secretory granules, and here we can see them. This is uh, the base, this is the ribosome to see in blue and through here, and then the red are the secretory granules that will be discharged. Uh, also, there's mitochondria. Mitochondria are in there because it produces energy, ATP energy. It's the power plant. And here we see the mitochondria, and there's one here, one there, one there, one there that we can see. It produces uh, ATP. And here we can see the mitochondrion. Tori is showing uh, the mitochondrion that we can see. It looks a little bit, you can see this, it's double membrane. And maybe you can see little uh, structures inside there. This is uh, little structures which has to do with a respiration uh, that uh, occurs. Now, mitochondria, they convert uh, sun energy. Remember, all our energy comes from sun, but it's stored in food. So plant and animals store the energy, uh, uh, and that uh, energy uh, is uh, used, broken down with respiration to produce ATP. And so mitochondria are found where they need a lot of ATP. These are intestinal absorptive cells, and right here we can see mitochondria here. We can see them up through there. And this is where they're absorbing food stuff. So remember, the cell membrane uh, 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 was the traffic cop for things coming in. And so in order to have transporters to transport things, you need uh, ATP, their energy source. So the mitochondria move into the area that is needed. In fact, mitochondria can change its shape. If you look at a mitochondria, this is 20 minutes, uh, you can see it's kind of long, narrow, kind of short, fat. Uh, they can fuse with one another, they can separate with one another. Uh, why they move like that, uh, we don't know, other than that they are uh, moving uh, in a cell and they move to an area that the cell needs more energy, like at the top uh, of, the, of the cells. <clears throat> and here we see mitochondria, these are heart cells. These are heart cells, or these are cardiac cells. This is a nucleus, and these dark things here are mitochondria. Uh, and so mitochondria are where they're needed uh, in, in the cell. And we can see it, uh, the cellular respiration occurs in mitochondria. So respiration occurs. Cellular respiration is a process by which glucose, mostly glucose, is broken down and releases its energy as ATP. So uh, mitochondria, we eat food, the glucose goes into uh, the cell, and, and then it goes into the mitochondria, and the mitochondria use it to make ATP. That's how it works in both animals and plant cells. And here we can see the formula uh, for cell respiration. So you got sugar. Here's sugar. You add oxygen. We have to breathe oxygen in, right? And then there's enzymes in mitochondria, and then it converts to carbon dioxide and water plus ATP, the energy that we need, and heat. We're warm-blooded, aren't we? Because our mitochondria produce heat and uh, the energy needed for, for cells. So uh, in order to make ATP, you need sugar and you need oxygen. We need oxygen to unlock the energy in sugar. 
So cellular respiration explains why we breathe oxygen in and why we exhale carbon dioxide. We do that because that is a byproduct of uh, this enzymatic uh, reaction. And also, we're warm-blooded because it produces heat. So this is the mitochondria doing this inside us, making our CO2, making our heat. That's four. Now, uh, where does oxygen come from? We need oxygen. Well, oxygen comes from photosynthesis. So this is what plants do. Plants, the photoplankton, kind of small animals that are in the ocean, uh, makes oxygen. That's about half of the oxygen. We also get oxygen from our trees, shrubs, grass, other plants. That's why we want to save trees and save plants because uh, they are using up the carbon dioxide that we want to get rid of and they're making the oxygen that, that we need. Now from where do mitochondria come? It takes, um, a mitochondria is kind of like a cell. It takes one to make one. They, do, they divide from one another. And here you can see where one mitochondria is dividing uh, from another one, giving rise to the mitochondria. Also, you might know that the mitochondria that you have all came from your mom. You don't come from a dad. Thanks, mom, for my mitochondria. Uh, so in addition to mitochondria, we have endoplasmic reticulum. And this is a construction team. They make things. They make proteins, make hormones, and detoxify. And here we can see the ribosomes, uh, the roughness of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So you have these uh, series of flattened uh, sacs in through there with ribosomes on the surface. That's what makes proteins. Uh, and then this is smooth endoplasmic reticulum without ribosomes for detoxifying things. Uh, so we can detoxify with our liver. And so here would be a pancreas making things, and this would be uh, the liver that's here. So uh, you have uh, uh, the, uh, then we have the Golgi apparatus, which modifies and adds sugar to packaging uh, mechanism. Here we see the, the Golgi apparatus in through there. It looks kind of like pancakes. Uh, and maybe Tori could hold up the Golgi apparatus that we could see. Uh, and so, uh, we have, and you can uh, see here, uh, there's different uh, uh, layers uh, that are there as, as well. Uh, and so we're going to compare uh, the uh, animal and plant cells. Dr. Is Johnson, what we're before do. you get into your comparison, we have some students who'd like to know a little bit more about the sodium potassium pump. If you could explain that a little more to them. Okay, uh, the sodium pot uh, potassium pump is uh, we, on, the, on the cell membrane, in order to keep the sodium level low inside the cell, uh, you have to have a pumping mechanism. So there's proteins that are in the cell membrane uh, that will uh, pick up sodium or potassium. Uh, and uh, whenever ATP is used for the pump, uh, it closes. So you have like, if this is a membrane, and you have this uh, protein in there that, that can open and close. So it opens and it has receptors for sodium. Sodium will bind to it. And then the ATP makes it change the shape of the protein. And so, uh, and so now the sodium moves out of the cell and it has potassium. And so potassium will bind there and come back. So you, you exchange the sodium for potassium. And the purpose is to uh, keep the sodium low uh, inside the cell because whenever you bring in glucose, which is a, a thing you have to have, the glucose uh, comes in with sodium. It's a sim pump. And so if sodium doesn't want to come in the cell, you can't bring glucose in the cell. So you pump the sodium out. So sodium wants to come from the outside to the inside, and it brings in glucose uh, at, the, uh, at the same time. And we have one more question about the mitochondria. They'd like to know, does it split during mitosis, or is mitosis a separate function. Okay, mitosis would be a separate function. Uh, mitochondria split whenever they are, are needed. Uh, and so uh, probably right after cell division, uh, the cell would detect that it needs more mitochondria and it would make more at that point in time. But not during the uh, process, you will still have your mitochondria there um, during the cell division, but it would not, um, it would not necessarily be dividing there because it's not necessarily uh, needing things. Here we're going to uh, compare plant and animal cells 
and you can see in yellow what we will compare, what's unique with the animal, what's unique with the plant, uh, and then some common things that we can say. So here's an animal cell up through here, and then this is a plant cell, kind of box uh, structure. Uh, as you can see, and you can remember, that they both had these various organelles that we talked about. The cell membrane, remember the lipid bilayer that's here, that's a cell membrane of the animal cell and also the plant cell. So right inside there you see it, it's the lipid bilayer, uh, uh, it uh, controls the flow of things coming in, it marks the limit of a cell, it separates the cell from the environment we talked about before. It also has a nucleus. We see uh, both of these uh, uh, have nuclei, uh, and here we can see the nucleus of an animal cell, uh, and so you can see the, uh, the chromatin inside there, uh, and you can see the nuclear envelope. It's a double membrane. Double membrane is the nucleus that, that is there. We can see some of uh, this is the Golgi apparatus rough in the plasma reticulum. Uh, here we see uh, an electron microscopic view of a lymphocyte showing the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So in this cell, it's a quiescent cell waiting to be activated. It's mostly nucleus, not much cytoplasm, until it is activated. So the nucleus has a double membrane, and how did it get it? Well, it got it because in a prokaryotic cell, remember, the DNA is kind of attached, attached to the membrane on the, uh, the cell membrane. Uh, and then, the, uh, so what happened was you get infolding of the cell membrane around the DNA, and that made the double membrane. So we don't have a, 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 a nuclear membrane, we have a nuclear envelope. In other words, two membrane. It's because both components were the cell membrane at one time. And that uh, is our eukaryotic cell. It has a nucleus in there. Um, and so here we can see the, the nucleus and the um, as a double membrane, as I mentioned, uh, holds the DNA for cell division. Here we can see a plant cell, an animal cell, and a plant cell. Uh, they both uh, divide uh, as as well. Both of them have a nuclear envelope, and that dissolved during during uh, mitosis. Here we see a mitochondrion. Both of these have mitochondria. They make energy, uh, and uh, they can change shapes, uh, as I mentioned to you. And this is the one that makes the ATP for both animal and plant cells, and here we can see the double membrane, uh, and you can see the uh, inside there where respiration occurs uh, in, inside, uh, inside the, the membrane. Uh, now, how do mitochondria develop the double membrane? Very similar to the nucleus in that you had a prokaryotic cell, so the mitochondrion that we have today was thought to be a prokaryotic cell that lived by itself before. And it became uh, inside the cell. So it has two membranes because it's got the original membrane around the prokaryotic cell. And then it has the cell membrane around it. So those are the two layers that make the, uh, the double membrane of mitochondria. Remember the clownfish, how they have a symbiotic relationship? Okay, well, the same happens here. We have mitochondria, we have a symbiotic relationship uh, with with the cell. As cells developed, uh, uh, then uh, the cell, the nucleus, uh, takes control of the mitochondrial replication and all depends upon what it needs. Uh, but this, this, so it has evolved since this process, but there are cells today that have a prokaryotic cell that lives inside of, of cells and they're completely independent of the other cell uh, that, that is there other than they benefit by symbiotic relationships. And so, that, in other words, what uh, scientists propose uh, in the past, they still have some of those uh, available today. Now, uh, what is different uh, from animal cells? One is they have small vacuoles. Small vacuoles are like for lysosomal digestion to occur, uh, release of waste. Uh, you have those in, in animals. Uh, also, we have centrioles. We have centriol. Uh, that we have, which are a nine uh, triplet of uh, microtubules, and maybe Tori would show uh, the centriol model that we have there. It shows you the triplets there, uh, and then uh, on the longitudinal view, uh, you can see where uh, the triplets will be coming down through there. Centriol uh, is involved, and uh, that's the organizing center 
four uh, microtubules. And here we can see where you get mitosis occurring here and here, uh, and you have a centriole on either side, and what's green there are the microtubules that are being uh, attached to the centriole. Now, plants do have cell division, uh, and they do have uh, uh, microtubules, but they don't have a centriole organizing, no centriole in plants. Uh, and so lysosomes uh, in animal cells use lysosome for intracellular digestion. Uh, this is why white blood cells can kill bacteria because they phagocytize them and digest away uh, is what happens. Even in the case of a heart attack is where the lysosomes have been released prematurely in the cell and kills the cell. So what about plant cells? One thing about plant cells is they have a cell wall. It's rigid, protects, uh, protective cell wall, but as a consequence, it prevents migration. So plant cells from a leaf can't migrate to another place, but uh, cells do migrate. Think about blood flowing. Uh, in the case of, uh, of, uh, of animals, uh, cells don't migrate. Okay, so it's, uh, it's made of sugar uh, substances, uh, and it, it maintains the shape of the cell, and it is a barrier. So it's a barrier outside, uh, outside it. So uh, when we kill bacteria and things, we are actually killing the cell wall, is uh, kind of what it is. They have a cell wall too, uh, as well as, as plants do. And here we can see the cell wall, electron microscopic view. These are chloroplasts here, but there's a cell wall outside your cell membrane. Also, the plants have a very large vacuole. That is, it could be large. Uh, and it stores nutrients there and also waste. So if a, if a, if a cell is exposed to toxic things, it dumps it into the vacuole uh, to help detoxify uh, the, the rest of the cell. Uh, it may act as a lysosome, may, uh, and generally large in plants. It also has to do with the tr trans plants being uh, uh, upright as opposed to uh, be rigid uh, because the organelles, if this vacuole is filled full of fluid, uh, the plant is hydrated, uh, it is rigid as opposed to drape down uh, if, it's, uh, if it's not. So the pressure, uh, how much water in this vacuole uh, dictates whether or not the plant is uh, upright or not. Another thing in plants are chloroplasts. Thank goodness they have them. Here we see one here, we can see one in this cell. This is one cell, we see chloroplasts in through there. Chloroplasts, only found in higher plants. They contain chlor chlorophyll, uh, which allows a plant to make energy from sunlight. So you get the sunlight, the sources of all energy, right there, uh, and it produces oxygen and carbon, and uses carbon dioxide, so it removes its carbon dioxide from these things. Also, it has a double membrane too. It has a double membrane like mitochondria. So here we see the photosynthesis. These are a bunch of cells, uh, chloroplasts they're in. So the sunlight comes down through there, plays a role in our activity. I'm sure you ate some food today, uh, and ultimately, uh, no matter where that food is, it starts out as plants with chloroplasts, uh, uh, converting that, uh, and then you may have different uh, animals. Ultimately, you eat uh, a certain animal, maybe a cow up there that's been eating grass, uh, but the grass had chlor chloroplasts that uh, got it from, uh, got the energy from the sun. So ultimately, the sunshine comes down, hits plants, and it absorbs all the colors except green. It reflects green, that's why we see green uh, that occurs. So if you look at photosynthesis, there's three major things that happen. One is it needs sunlight, right? Sunlight needs to be there. Also, it needs water because the water has the oxygen inside it. So it's got to split that to produce the oxygen. Also, it needs carbon dioxide. So it uses the carbon dioxide to fix the carbons in sugar. So those are three things that have to occur. And so you take water, carbon dioxide, uh, uh, with a chloroplast, you make sugar, oxygen, and water. And so here we can see the formula uh, that's, that's there. You got CO2 that's from the air, you get out, water, sunshine, and you make sugar that uh, we can eat, uh, water, 
and it makes oxygen we can breathe. And so it's very handy. So if you look at cell respiration, we talked about mitochondria before. Remember sugar? Sugar we use. Plants make sugar. Oxygen we use. Plants make oxygen that, that we see. And so it's just reverse. So the uh, cell respiration is catabolic. That is, it breaks things down. As opposed to antibiotic, it builds things up, is what the plants do. And so here we remember when we said that mitochondria was a prokaryotic cell that moved into the cell and became a symbiotic relationship. The same is true with chloroplasts. Chloroplasts, like mitochondria, have a double membrane. Where does that second membrane come from? Came from the cell membrane, just like we have there for the double membrane of the mitochondria. And so, a symbiotic relationship inside the cell. So both chloroplasts and mitochondria are believed to have been engulfed from ancient eukaryotic cells and become functional organelles in the current eukaryotes that we have that we are composed of ourselves. Remember the symbiotic relationship between the two. So since both plants and animals uh, have mitochondria, uh, uh, you can look at possible linkages between plants and animals over a period of time. And so here if we look at at cytochrome C, which are uh, proteins in the mitochondria, we can see those in animals and those in plants. These are different years. This is uh, two billion years ago. And you see these are plants. There's rice right there. And here's humans over there. And you can see that there's places, scientists believe that there was lineages in the past, 100,000 years ago, uh, 1,000 million years ago, uh, they were uh, they were together, and so um, uh, there's organelles. Uh, uh, things in cytoplasm has organelles. Some that do not, and some that have inclusions that we want to sh share. I'm going to have to move forward. Uh, do we have time for a two-minute video? Okay. And so this shows you the cytoskeleton uh, that that you see. Now here we see the cytoskeleton, and we want to take a look at this. Cytoskeleton is the railroad tracks that, that cytoplasmic streaming occurs. Remember I said uh, that um, eukaryotic cells have cytoplasmic streaming. So if we could take a look at this right quick, we can see this individual is uh, taking a plant uh, seeds and we're gonna see it grow. Uh, a seed, well, of course, one of the first thing it needs is a root, and so it's going to send the root out. <clears throat> Here you can see a little root coming out, and the root has little hairs, and if you look at the little hairs on there, you can see the cytoplasmic streaming. That is, you can see the cytoplasm moving. See the little hair? And you can see the streaming of, of the cytoplasm. That's what you have in eukaryotic cells. You do not have that in prokaryotic cells. And so this is a really artist's view of what's going on inside. You know, this is, a, this is animation in this point. And it shows you uh, that the cytoskeleton uh, is, uh, is uh, just run out through the cell. It makes the shell have its shape. But also, it's the railroad track that they're following. See, this vesicle that we saw a while ago in photovoltaic streaming is following this actin filament. So it's following it along. That's what is responsible for the cytoplasmic streaming that we said prokaryotic cells do not have that we can see. Maybe you want to be a scientist someday. I can keep that out of there. Close that. Uh, I, can't, I can't close that out. Okay.
Okay, we're down here at the bottom. All right. Okay, so uh, uh, Cyrus Skeleton is what is the river track that follow along and through there. We have inclusions in cell. So basically we're saying a, a cell, plant cell, uses sunlight to make energy. Uh, animal cells use uh, uh, stored sunlight in the form of food uh, to make energy as well. So that's an antibiotic versus a catabolic cell. And we talked about these. And go out and hug a tree because it's making oxygen for you. If we had some questions or time, we would be happy to entertain any of those. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for today. We thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time when we talk about biomedical sciences and the, the careers and possibilities that that major can entail. If you'd like to learn more about science, cells, STEM, veterinary medicine, we encourage you to visit our website. It's peer.tamu.edu, and we will see you next week.